Um, welcome to the third in a series of presentations um, relating uh, Smith chart, uh, the Smith chart to uh, various exercises of uh, transmission lines and profiling loads, etc. So this particular exercise, uh, we'll be taking a look at how we can use a shorted stub uh, to perform a narrow band uh, match. Uh, between a 50 ohm transmission line and a load impedance of 150 plus J25. We'll create a pictorial here in a second for you. Uh, we're going to assume that the load impedance I just quoted you is for an antenna. The system will be operating at 800 megahertz. Okay, so here's your pictorial. We have a, a signal source, a 50 ohm source at 800 megahertz. The velocity factor of the line is 0.66 and the load impedance is 150 plus J25. Uh, probably a good starting point, uh, or as a first step, we will calculate the guide wavelength. Uh, the guide wavelength, based on the information provided, uh, is uh, 24.75 centimeters, uh, and that's based upon the fact that uh, the propagation velocity uh, divided by the frequency um, will give you those values. So propagation velocity, of course, is C times uh, Vf, uh, which is velocity factor. Now we will uh, normalize the impedance of the load to the Smith chart. Uh, the 50 ohms, which is the representing the uh, um, transmission line, is represented by the red dot in the center of the Smith chart, and we will normalize the load to that. Uh, 50 into 150 plus J25 gives us a value of 3 plus J.5, which we can locate on the Smith chart. Uh, right where that circle is, the uh, real value of 3 intercepting the reactive value of, of 0.5. So we'll identify that it's load. Uh, we then take a um, something like a compass and we can scribe a circle uh, using that load impedance as a reference. So we draw a circle uh, by placing the uh, compass in the center of the Smith chart and letting the pencil or the pen run through uh, in circular fashion through the load. So now we know the uh, characteristics of the uh, transmission line. So the next thing we need to do, because we're using a shorted stub, is to draw a line from the uh, point where we identify the load through the center of the Smith chart on through to the other side of the Smith chart, passing through the impedance circle. Uh, Philip Smith, when he designed this, took this into account and accommodated for uh, placing the Smith chart in what we call admittance mode, which is great for when you're using shorted stubs and various other applications. So where the uh, line uh, goes through the impedance circle, that's where the load admittance is uh, located. Uh, not only that, but we've also placed the line to the outside of the Smith chart, and that now serves as a reference for the load, because we're going to have to now uh, attempt to locate where on the transmission line the real value uh, of the impedance is to be. In other words, where is the first point that the real value that we're trying to uh, match is located at. Um, so that can be uh, realized by simply going up uh, along the circle, uh, starting from the center of the Smith chart, which is the real value that we're looking for, and note where it passes through the impedance uh, circle. Uh, once we've identified that location, we draw a line from the center of the circle, once again through to the outside of the uh, Smith chart, uh, and we now know where uh, or and or how far back from the load the stub needs to be placed. Now we can qualify this a little bit further by taking note of how far we have to rotate to get to that position. So those green arrows represent the length on the line back from the load where we would have to place the stub. Notice it states the location of the stub is 0.168 plus 0.008 equals 0.176 wavelengths back from the load. The 0.168 comes from reading the outside of the Smith chart. But take note that we started before our starting point of zero. So we have to add that little stretch right there. That happens to be 0 0.008 of a wavelength. So um, that gives us 
uh, a position 0.176 wavelengths back. Uh, later in the presentation, we'll calculate exactly what uh, length that is based on our guide wavelength calculation. Um, now we have to look at um, what the value of susceptance we need to cancel. So for example, you'll see that I've already got the arrow drawn to 1.2 and I know that to be the case because if I draw an arrow once again up on the susceptance arc that exists in the northern hemisphere there, and don't forget we're in capacitive susceptance, um, we now have a value that we can realize, well, if we can cancel that out with uh, equal but opposite polarity susceptance, then we've eliminated the reactive value and we'll be left just with the real value uh, that matches the characteristic impedance of the line. So in summary, we've already got position. Now let's find what the length of that line is. So it's 1.2, a value of 1.2 susceptance from the northern hemisphere there, the upper hemisphere of the Smith chart. And we will start to walk back from the point of infinite admittance, which I've got labeled as 0.25. I have a line at that point. Don't forget that center line that represents re resistance, SWR. And in this case here, um, it's going to be the point of infinite uh, admittance. Why admittance? Because we're dealing with a shorted stub. So uh, we're at 0.25 at that point, and we want to find out where the equal but opposite value of 1.2 is, and I've just drawn a circle around it. We will draw a line out from the center of the Smith chart through that to the outside of the Smith chart. And we find that that reads a value of 0.36, which is now shown on the uh, screen. So we want to find out what the distances and wavelengths is between the 0.36 and the 0.25. And you can see in the lower right, we've calculated that. The length of the line is uh, 0.11 wavelengths long. So in other words, <coughs> those green arrows that I've just added represent the length. So we now know position, and we know length. Position is... Uh, already been given. It's 0.176 wavelengths back, and the length of the line is 0.11 wavelengths. Now, how is this going to look back in our pictorial now? Well, let's go back to the guide wavelength calculation that we did earlier. It's 24.75 centimeters, and with a quick calculation, we find that it is point, uh, 4.356 uh, centimeters. And that really actually should be uh, 0.176 times the wavelength, and that's 24 point or 4.356 centimeters. And we find that it's uh, located at that point, and the length of the shorted stub is 0.11 wavelength, and that should be 0.11 times uh, 24.75 centimeters, and that equals 2.72. Uh, centimeters. So just a little correction there in the, in, the, in the math. For the location back, it should be 0.176. Um, this one doesn't show the 0 0.008 added to it, but we'd be very, very close to that. And um, you would probably want to uh, add that to make it a little bit more accurate. Okay, so uh, that's the implementation of a, sh a shorted stub for a narrowband uh, uh, match. Thank you.